Patricia Windrow once again at the Cable Easel with my program of Working From Life. Uh, usually it's landscapes of the local area, but um, once in a while it's a still life. And um, because this is the height of the harvest season, and because color is such a remarkable thing to deal with, I've chosen a really very colorful setup here. Uh, managed to put on a very colorful costume in order to do it. So the whole, f the whole thrust of this particular program, which in this is part one, is to concentrate on color and the use of it. Also to introduce a little bit something which is probably very mysterious to a lot of people, and that's Impressionism. Uh, impressionists were the ones that were able to uh, eliminate detail and simply concentrate on the facts, ma'am. Eliminate detail to the point whereby it was just the essentials, the fundamental, the basic color and shape of the object. I probably, because I'm such a realist and can't get out of that uh, straitjacket that I'm in about being a realist, I may wind up by putting highlights on these things. But the beginning is going to be a placement of the objects and the color um, relationship one to the other and of course the fascination with uh, this remarkable harvest that we have here on Long Island. So with a very very slight and you may notice a very slight penciling in of where they go because it takes a, some time to to uh, place these things I'm going to I'm going to show you how uh, with a very quick um, placement only of the objects um, that um, the way I start these things and the way they are finally resolved. So, we have here one yellow uh, pepper. Uh, well, actually it's not a pepper, there's another name for it, but it's in the pepper family. Then one uh, wonderful tight-skinned avocado with this little knob there. Um, and the, next to it is a green pear, a sort of a uh, sort of a, a, a height of the uh, harvest season object, which of course um, they're in abundance now. These are all bought at the local supermarket, so they're available to anybody who decides that they want to do one of these. And behind it is a really funky piece. It's um, uh, you think of green peppers as as green, obviously, and there are now orange ones taste exactly the same but in a salad you can't you can't beat the uh, excitement of that color so uh, here we have the orange p green pepper which is an already an oxymoron it doesn't uh, doesn't go together here is probably the strangest of them all and it's a if you if you can believe it or not a white um, eggplant I did not know that there was such a thing as a white eggplant, but there it is. And um, I can't guarantee what they taste like, but I can guarantee that they certainly make an interesting uh, part of this composition. And you may, uh, and I found them at, uh, at the local market in uh, in St. James. So, and they come from the uh, from the farms around here. So we have one, two, three, four, five already. I believe this is a composition just short of a dozen objects. Here is one that maybe not many people buy, but then again, uh, many people probably are not uh, into the business of using ginger. But um, if anybody cooks chicken and forgets the ginger, they have not experienced the entire amazingness of chicken. Chicken with some ginger, fresh ginger cut up, is uh, a gourmet uh, delight and not hard to do. And you just have to recognize that this strange knobby looking thing is a piece of fresh ginger. 
Uh, then comes another one of these um, uh, contradictory color schemes, a green pepper that happens this way to be brilliant yellow, almost the color of lemons. Um, I always like to point out that these things are <coughs> um, a uh, thumb uh, in the eye uh, to society that says um, all apples are red and all bananas are yellow. Actually, there are yellow, there are red bananas. So, uh, being a colorist, I am. Uh, I always have a great deal of fun, especially with little children. When I when I do occasionally have a class with little children, and I'll bring in uh, red pears and green apples and red bananas and so on and. Um, uh, point out that observation of these various things is in the eye of the beholder and you can train people to see things slightly differently. Here is the, uh, here is the, uh, we're getting on to about the ninth or so of this, of these objects and the punctuation mark on this whole parade of, of, uh, of um, vegetables and fruits is this incredibly dark uh, called Red Delicious Apple. I think it actually should be renamed as Black Delicious because it's actually incredibly dark and um, may or may not have a wonderful flavor. Uh, we'll soon find out when I finish this. I'll just bite into it and find out. Um, the final one is a something which I never use in cooking. It's a hot pepper, but my children and uh, apparently most of the world is now completely uh, taken in and enamored of the hot pepper. And this is uh, probably the most wonderful shape, uh, comical in a way, uh, until you bite into it and then it's not funny anymore. Anyway, the um, these uh, these lovely shapes are, uh, and this is part one. I'm going to concentrate on doing the impressionist part of this uh, for the first part, and then the second part will be uh, working in the details. Uh, see whether or not we like the um, the. Uh, impressionist part of it. The shadows, uh, as I've said so, so often before, are, are equally as important in these compositions to do what I call anchor the objects to the ground so that they are not um, floating about in space. The um, the the the, uh, the lovely color pattern of this may be something that uh, the people who are watching are interested in in perusing themselves. It opens the new worlds of uh, consciousness, and I don't mean that in a in any kind of a uh, silly uh, new age way. I mean the fact that we are surrounded with such uh, such a wonderful variety, and that um, instead of calling the interior decorator in to um, make your house what you want it, do it yourself and uh, follow the colors that are right there in the vegetable department of the supermarket. Well, here is the layout. Somewhat pyramidal. There is a sort of a pyramid shape to it. And there are 11 uh, motifs here. Of course, uh, the use of these, I've, I've called this program because uh, the, uh, the um, library here at the station wants to always be able to catalog these things and put them in their proper place. And they said, what do you want to call this piece? And instead of uh, fruits and vegetables and still life, I thought I would call it jewel tones. And uh, I believe that that's probably exactly what these things are. They're beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, variety of colors, which, uh, which uh, to me as a painter are extremely exciting. So I think I'll start with the most exciting of all. This is, uh, this is, the, uh, this is the application in an uh, impressionistic manner. This is what, what Cezanne did with his apples, and people may be conscious of that, just the color. And uh, they slapped the color on in a fever of excitement at a time when everything was extremely formalized and suddenly these people decided that they were going to do something entirely different and Impressionism in France was born. Uh, a lot of people don't understand it. A lot of people find it um, oversimplified. But if you try it, I think that you will kind of uh, fall into the trap of liking the, um, the whole attitude about Impressionism. Let's go. Let me let me go to the to the next one. Fill it in with its um, with its almost pure yellow, with a touch of the uh, of the orange. And uh, when all of these things are are um, placed, then uh, then we can look at it and see. I'll I'll do the whole thing in the uh, first part, and then the second one is going to deal with uh, how do you uh, convert uh, and do you want to convert a piece into. Um, a realistic composition. So there will be two things going at once here. The opportunity to talk about a very 
un misunderstood phase of the world of painting, and then to talk about the refinement or the other approach. Uh, next to that, because I have my brush in the yellow, I think I'm going to uh, uh, move on to the pear, which is a is, is, which is a sort of a very pure red tone. That's a little bit too dark. A pure red tone to the pear. There we have it. Um, and who can resist uh, the shape of a pear, but in an entirely different color? Uh, the, um, the, the colors that we live with are usually what they call in the decorating world safe colors. However, the, um, the world of, uh, of nature does not know what a safe color is. Uh, witness some of the amazing birds that you see around with uh, absolutely outrageous color schemes. Here's my deep red called uh, Black Delicious, I suppose is uh, going to be renamed. Uh, an extremely um, rich color. If, um, if there's a bolt of uh, this uh, color in velvet, the chances are that I will buy at least three yards of it for no other reason but to own it because um, I think these colors are no wonder the kings of the world decided that they wanted those uh, colors for their robes because that is a, a, a wonderful, a very seductive red. All right, um, and black and black and very mysterious. Well, here we have a brush full of red. I'm not interested in that anymore. I'm going to now switch to the greens, which means that when you start switching, you have to make sure that whatever brush you're using, and sometimes I work only with one brush. So when I switch to a, when I decide to use the same brush, because it's behaving very nicely, I'm going to make sure that I get rid of most of the color that is in, that's in the bristles. The, this happens. Uh, this happen. The, the need for that happens only when you use a um, a brush with a palette knife. Uh, you you're kind of free of that. This green is um, almost pure, almost pure out of the tube. Yellow green. Maybe it, uh, there's a little bit of touch of of um, a blue in there to to lower its value. But it is pretty much a. Uh, uh, pure green. Uh, and so we're now, we've now uh, Dio dealt with one, two, three, four, five colors. Uh, perfectly ordinary objects. We all know these. They are uh, available to us uh, just for a short walk down to the corner or a short ride or even um, at the local uh, fruit, sale, fruit stand. There is the uh, sort of middle green of that apple, I mean a pear, and then going on to I'm going to get some of this drying liquid here. Some of this, um, the, the, the deep green of the avocado. So uh, the rapidity with which I'm doing this should not intimidate anybody or they say, well, she's a professional, that's why she's doing it so fast. I think that it is, uh, uh, the thing that the only complication about this was was the, was the layout, to be able to place these objects and to keep them as fairly close to life size as possible. If you start making them bigger, you wind up uh, running right off the canvas. And of course, the uh, shape of a, of a particular piece has got to be accurate. At least you have to know that that is, well, it's got a little bit more of a bulge here. Uh, and uh, so much for impressionism. I'm already concerned about the bulge in the, um, in the avocado. Well, we now have six colors, all very seductive, I have to say. And um, with green in my brush and the need to just add a little bit of yellow, this hot pepper down here, it will be the next one uh, to, to, to block in. This is uh, called blocking in. Um, I'm using oils, obviously, and the, uh, and, I, and the strokes are deliberate. They are not haphazard like many programs say that you can just sort of put them on with a huge wide brush and, and, and I, don't call that, I don't call that painting. But the, this brush is, an, is a number six square cut red sable brush that has seen better times. It's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit old and worn, but um, nevertheless it works in certain instances very well. Here we have uh, working up towards seven colors. Uh, the, um, the nice part about being able to deal with these things is that they are, uh, they don't fade. Uh, flowers keep you hopping and keep you absolutely uh, chained to your work, whereas these things can sit on the counter for days and never change their form, which is, uh, it's, which is an advantage and uh, something good to know. 
because uh, it takes uh, it takes a long time for um, for peppers to change. Avocados remain that way until they actually desiccate and become. Uh, shells with a little uh, loose object in the middle. The um, this uh, little sort of a yellowish uh, pepper that really can't make up its mind what color it is um, gives a gives a sort of a pretty variety to it. But I'm going to put the basic color on, and then uh, as I uh, leave uh, the. Um, uh, impressionist uh, part of this show and the realism part of the show will come in the second half um, this little pepper will just get its its, its basic tone uh, because it basically it's a it's a little sort of an apricot you know, pale orange yellow thing uh, with some uh, with some uh, pinks and greens that come later so with uh, with that much one two three four five six seven eight color eight colors I'm going to take a short break uh, and clean my brush for a minute I'll be right back shot of this extremely disorganized palette and general equipment. Now, you know, if you are not willing to get your fingers and your, uh, and your environment all messed up with paint, but you better take up sewing because painting is a messy business. There's no question about it. You kind of you shouldn't throw it around, but you can't help it. You get it on your clothes and you get it on your equipment and you get it everywhere. Hopefully what you get on the canvas is the part that makes the difference. But um, here we are working in two funny kind of approaches to this business of painting objects uh, that you uh, that are familiar and that are in different styles. I I think that uh, the realist that I have uh, the realism that I have been presenting for all these um, for all these years and months is okay. But once in a while I think that there is uh, the need to branch into a, into some sort of a phase which which introduces other styles of painting. There are other styles. Every one of them is equally as valid and um, sometimes e equally as fascinating, sometimes even more so. This is the um, is that strange um, piece of fruit that I didn't know existed until this morning um, of a white eggplant. Um, uh, of course, needless to say, I'm going to remove this um, still life, take me, take the objects with me and try this out and then I can report uh, my culinary uh, deductions the next time that whether or not there is any resemblance at all taste-wise to one of the, to our, the favorite um, purple avocado, I mean uh, eggplant. So there is the layout for that one. So we now have uh, nine colors. Not that we're playing games of painting, uh, of, co of counting, but we're also um, uh, concerned with the wonderful variety that is involved in this and the fact that it's an object lesson in how to observe what you're doing with uh, your uh, own visual um, acquaintance with things around you. Here is uh, another strange dichotomy. This is a pink potato. Uh, awfully delicious uh, when you uh, come right down to it and um, certainly adds a great deal to a composition because it's uh, an amorphous shape. You can't, all these potatoes are somewhat round, but they do vary and they've got 
a nice skin texture and uh, they're sort of silly. I think that red potatoes are silly until of course you put butter and salt and pepper on them and then they're very serious. Um, the, I've left the, la the last one here on this composition <coughs> is the ginger and um, that is a sort of a gray tan zero nothing color that I fail to understand that I can describe, but um, it's available in just about every supermarket. There was a time <clears throat> when these uh, exotic uh, uh, pieces, uh, food items were not available, but now in the, uh, in the vegetable section you will find these uh, ginger roots. Uh, ginger is okay if it's powdered and in a jar, but it doesn't have any resemblance to the fresh ginger uh, when you use it in um, when you use it in cooking. It's uh, it's really uh, succulent and delectable and, and very interesting. Here we have um, some now dark accents are going to be coming in, and um, let me find the right brush for that before I go too far too far. The top of the eggplant is another what I call a zero nothing mysterious little color. It's a combination of all sorts of colors. It's got green and I don't know brown and black and white and so on. But it's um, it's the uh, it's the top of this funky plant, and um, it's uh, a combination of all sorts of tones. As I say, there is green and purple, and uh, in that close-up, it sort of looks like a marine animal, but um, it's the top. It probably was green when it started out, but because it's been, uh, maybe maybe it changes color almost immediately after it's been picked, because this is, these, this is fresh produce. Uh, this is the uh, this is that nice little supermarket uh, right by the railroad tracks in St. James. Uh, I'm not quite sure the name of it, but um, it's right there and open bright and early this morning with all sorts of activities. Well, here we have uh, the great the dark green on the inside of this um, of this uh, orange pepper, and then uh, the dark green, the extremely dark green in the yellow pepper that is hiding underneath this turn here and the uh, placement of these colors is be is begun to be um, extremely uh, obvious what I'm working on. I'm working on uh, on the concentration of color of uh, familiar objects in an impressionistic way. Uh, I'm sure that um, that uh, Cezanne probably would have been even more impressionistic and a couple of others would have been uh, much less literal than I am and this is about the best I can do as far as being uh, unliteral is concerned. I'm, I find myself uh, always chained to the fascination of the actual shape of the object. There are other ways of approaching this and I may uh, towards the end of the next part of the program show you uh, how that approach can be really uh, reduced to virtually uh, just slapping color on with no concern for form, just the, uh, just the uh, splash of color that this particular composition uh, takes. Uh, I'm going to be using my very favorite little plastic um, mixing uh, palette knife and I'm going to mix up uh, a rather, lar a rather um, large quantity of the uh, shadow color. The shadow color being uh, as interesting and as important to me as the rest of it. Uh, it um, it's the anchor to the whole thing. It's also deceptively dark. Even though this is on a white background, the shadow is extremely dark. Well, not extremely, but it is uh, darker than you think, and it also has a bluish cast to it. Uh, the, uh, the, the true uh, way avant-garde out there in left field type of impressionists would probably make it purple. And I may do that in the um, re resolution of this composition on part two. But for, for right now, I'm going to follow these colors exactly. Uh, let's see whether or not this one uh, comes close to the uh, color of the, of the shadows that I see before me. Yeah, well... I think possibly that's okay. Yeah, I think that's okay. Um, and uh, and, and uh, on my uh, on my uh, really avant-garde approach, uh, as as I progress with this thing, I will probably show you the liberties which can be taken uh, not only with form but with color in in, in the impressionist school of painting. 
uh, being not being an impressionist, um, I will probably have to work very hard at it and try to do something which is hard sometimes is to eliminate detail. Uh, when you're that used to it, it's, it's, um, it is a concentrated effort to eliminate the detail. But here is um, Here's the introduction of what you would call the mixed color. All of the all of the others are pretty pure, uh, but here is the here's the um, here's the mixed tone of the gray, very close to what it is in the um, in the composition. I am. Um, I'm, go I'm going to be dealing with a little bit more of different styles of painting because, uh, you know, you can keep repeating things uh, so often and then after a while you find yourself saying that, or, that there is something else beyond this. Uh, I would like to uh, probably in, uh, do some uh, portraiture in an impressionistic way, in the way that a painter called Modigliani did. Uh, Modigliani was a wonderful uh, avant-garde um, uh, painter of, of people and um, the identif thing, identifying thing about Modigliani's portraits is that all of the women had very long necks and eyes without pupils. I'll bring some, I'll bring some samples in. Uh, they are mysterious and very beautiful. Uh, we appreciate them now and they go for hundreds of thousands of dollars because uh, um, that's what happens when uh, artists uh, die, uh, their work, if is recognized, becomes extremely valuable. But unfortunately, at the time, Modigliani was, uh, was, uh, lived in poverty and died in poverty, and his paintings weren't bringing five dollars a piece. But now they are, and uh, we look at them with a different sense of, um, of understanding of what he was up to. So I would like to probably uh, bring a model in and uh, do it in a Modigliani style and see whether or not uh, the uh, the investigation of other styles of painting is going to be not only of interest but also of some value to the uh, to the audience in general. I think that um, it's time that we that we branched out just a little bit. The uh, the cable vision people branched out and became channel one, meaning that they are being broadcast in many different locations, and so now the cable easel can can keep up with the times and, um, and do the same thing. Well, it looks like this uh, half hour has gone and um, uh, the need to close it is, is upon us. Here is what you might call uh, a slightly impressionistic um, uh, painting uh, study of all of these objects without detail, just color masses. Um, I kind of go for it. I hope you have gone for it. And the second part of this program, uh, which is called Jewel Tones, uh, for want of a better title, will be the application of design, um, I, mean, I mean of detail, namely shadows and highlights, and to make them uh, more form rather than color. Uh, if I have enough time, I'll splash some color on in a genuinely abstract way, and maybe we can have ourselves some fun. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something from it, and I'll hope you watch the next time. Bye-bye.